This is not necessarily threatening, but something I have come to think about a few times over the past years. So I was about six, seven years old when my older friend and I were messing around in the neighborhood doing random stuff. We decided to visit a lady who lived in a house in a street right below mine. The lady was about 26, 30 years old, and we would visit her every once in a while. She would give us small gifts like old video games and makeup she had lying around. None of our families knew the lady, but she had lived there for a good decade beforehand. It was pretty late when we knocked on her door, and when she came out, we asked her if we could come over for a visit. However, she told us that she had a boyfriend coming over. So my friend and I parted ways and went home for the night. About an hour later, I was just sitting on the sofa when I looked down at her house and spotted a man walking inside. I didn't think much of it other than it must be her boyfriend, and I eventually went to my room to go to sleep. I wasn't really tired, so I went to look out my bedroom window, which had an even more direct view towards the lady's house. I saw the lady standing on her balcony and the boyfriend standing on the ground. She had a shovel in her hand and seemed like she was yelling at him. After about five minutes, she went down to the ground where the guy was standing, and she started beating him in the head with the shovel as I watched, completely frozen. She was beating him pretty badly, and the guy ended up just laying on the ground. There was a lot of blood visibly on the rocks around him, and he had a white hoodie, so it showed pretty well. I went and got my mom to look, and she called the police. Obviously, after this incident, our parents didn't want us to visit the lady anymore. And we never did again until it turned out the lady had a long criminal record and was known to be extremely violent. Something six-year-old me didn't quite catch, so for Christmas, I was dealing out Christmas cookies and cards to the neighborhood, including to the lady. I don't remember the interaction very well, other than me knocking on her door wanting to give her my Christmas cards. She pulled me inside to come talk to her husband, a new boyfriend, I'm assuming who was sitting on the couch. The lady asked me to repeat what I said to her about the cards to the man. At this point I was getting scared, so I ran out of their house and never returned again. Definitely observe who your kids visit. A few years ago I moved into a new apartment that had a wide front porch I enjoyed sitting on. I quickly noticed an old man 80s who lived next door was on his porch often too, and being a friendly neighbor I would wave to him. He seemed harmless and happy to have someone interacting with him, and he would chat with me about how much he missed his daughter and granddaughter my mom had even said she thinks I must remind him of them. One day he saw me out for a walk with my mom and ran over to talk. He told me he was an artificial insemination doctor in Egypt random and wanted to give me a present. He then handed me a seashell with the word love written on it with rhinestones. It was a little odd, but I accepted the gift, and he leaned in to double-cheek kiss me, which I accepted as I thought it was a harmless cultural gesture. However, something about our interaction seemed very off to me, and I was standoffish with him after that. About a week later, he saw me on my porch and came over. I was nervous but polite and didn't greet him with my usual friendliness. He started to talk to me about the meaning of love and what is life without it. He told me I'm a beautiful blonde, I'm a redhead, and that I must wash my hair daily to prevent bugs. He then went in for a kiss, but I moved and he ended up kissing my boob. At this point I was angry, stood up and shouted no, no more. He stepped back and gave me an angry look for a few seconds before finding a strand of my red hair that must have fallen during his attempted kiss. He picked it off his shirt smelled it, rolled it up and tucked it in his pocket, and then ran home. So after this, I sadly didn't spend much time outside. I had some anxiety about it, and I didn't want to get into a situation that was going to escalate into him trying something, police, etc. However, whenever I left my house, he was sitting on his porch and had an unbreakable stare. My dad confronted him and his wife and said if he comes on my property again, the police will be called. He seemed to leave me alone before trying one more time. I was on my way to the doctor when he came running in my direction and stood in the way. I told him to move and I walked around him, but he started to follow me, begging to come with me. He pulled out a gift, another seashell, and a very old fortune cookie. I told him I did not want these things and to leave me the hell alone. That was our last interaction. He still continued to stare at me whenever I left my apartment but I avoided crossing his apartment and didn't make eye contact. 
I was living there on a month-to-month -month lease so I moved shortly after anyway. But like I said, I sometimes still get the creeps thinking about this guy. I used to live in an apartment a few blocks from the beach off one of the main streets in a beachside city in California. A new whiskey bar opened downtown and my neighbor's daughters invited me to go check it out. We had a great time, maybe a little too great a time, and around 2 in the morning decided to head home. We weren't wasted, but all three of us were definitely drunk. I requested to walk home since we were only around 1-5 miles away and I was feeling too dizzy to take an Uber was also fairly easy to get home as we only had to walk a block up from where we were to be back on the main thoroughfare I lived on. The entire walk home was well lit along a busy thoroughfare with cars passing regularly even at 2 a.m. My friends agreed to walk home as they were both also feeling tipsy and we all felt the walk would help us sober up a bit. We are walking along, laughing and about halfway home when one of my friends quietly says to stay calm and don't look but there is someone following us. We immediately shut up but keep walking. My friend quietly tells us he has been following us for last few minutes. She has been waiting to tell us anything because she wasn't certain if he was following us. A few minutes later, and we are all 100% sure this guy has been following us and we will be back to my apartment soon. The entire time the creepster is following us, he maintains the same distance about 100 feet back. We can't see him enough to identify what he looks like, and we are afraid to call the cops because we aren't sure what he will do if he thinks he sees us calling the cops. Cops wouldn't have had enough time to show up and find this guy that we can't identify. We are almost to my apartment and discussing our options. We know we don't want to lead this guy back to where I live. He may decide at a later date to come back. Calling the police is still out because he's still near enough to see what we are doing. Everybody is asleep and my friends don't live there and still have to get back to their car so that they can get home. We decide to keep walking past my apartment and turn on a side street going down the opposite block to mine. As soon as we know that we are out of sight of the creepster, we bolt around the next corner and take off running as fast as we can so we can get as far down the street as we can. Our intent was to loop back to my apartment without the creep was seeing where we went. At this point we don't know if he saw what street we went down. So we wanted to make sure that he wasn't still on the main street so we duck behind a car towards the end of the street we are on and wait. Maybe about 30 seconds goes by and I pop up to check the end of the street from the direction we came from. Sure enough, Creep is at the end of street looking around to see where we went and seems out of breath from running. He does not see me. I tell my friends and we take off running down the end of the street and around the block as we are now near enough to my apartment that we can run in, and the man won't have enough time to catch up to see where we went. Shaking and terrified we collapsed into my couches and waited an hour or two to make sure the guy would be truly gone before my friends left and went home. We felt very fortunate that our friend caught the guy following us as soon as she did. It was really scary to know that the cops wouldn't have gotten there in time and that a lone man was willing to take on all three of us. We didn't call him out for following us because we figured anyone crazy enough to follow three chicks at one time probably was up to no good and was not going to be worried about us noticing. We felt very fortunate that nothing happened to us that night. Said it. I did offer for my friends to stay on the couch that night, but they wanted to go home and sleep in their own beds. As we were all sober by the time they left, I didn't push them to stay. Friends don't let friends don't let friends drive drunk. This happened a couple years ago, but reading posts here made me think about it. I moved to the UK from Finland to study. On my second year, I had moved to a flat with a couple of friends. It was a two-story house, and we lived on the second floor on a main street. I was smoking in front of the house, and a guy was walking towards me, he looked a bit drunk and had white foam around his mouth. He stopped to talk to me, this happened quite often so I didn't think much of it. Then he asked for my number, I said I can't remember it and left me phone inside. Then he said to write my name on his phone so that he could add me on Facebook, but his phone was dead. I didn't want him to have my name or number so I felt relieved. So he just asked what my name was. Usually I try to pronounce my name in a way that it is easier to understand, but this time I didn't. Then the guy proceeded to scratch my name into his arm. 
hard enough that it left a clear mark. He misspelled my name, but I didn't tell him. I finished my cigarette, told him bye, and went inside. Next day on my way to the bus, I could hear someone shouting to stop. I looked around, and he was running after me without shoes on. I just shouted, I will miss the bus if I stop and walked faster, and he stopped following me. Now, so whenever I went out to smoke, I checked my window to make sure he wasn't there. Sometimes he was, so I waited until it was safe to go out. One day, I didn't see him, so I walked out. As soon as I was out, he came walking down the street and asked for my name and number. This time I told him I wasn't interested. He looked visible upset he started walking back and forth holding his head and shaking it, and mumbling something to himself. I quickly left and went inside. For a while when I got outside, I could see him peeking behind a tree before starting to walk towards me, but as soon as I saw him I would quickly go back inside. One day it had been a while since I saw him so I was looking at my phone when I heard him talk to me. He told me to wait and not to go anywhere, that he just needed to talk to a friend and pointed towards an alleyway. When he had turned into the alleyway, which was very close, I just run inside. I could hear him running behind me asking me to stop and knocking on my door for a while before leaving. I was about moved to a different place soon after, so I never had to see him again. I really wonder if he had a friend or something else in the alleyway, and what he was planning to do. these encounters took place over the span of two months, but seemed to gradually increase in creepiness. My wife and I lived in somewhat of an apartment community after we married. Each unit looked the same and was connected to no more than one other unit. Important part, though, is that each unit was close together, and our back door was roughly eight feet from another unit's back door. We had lived in the little community for a while, and we had some great relationships with our neighbors. The folks behind us, whose back door could be seen from ours, had a small child and were super pleasant people. They moved out, everyone said their goodbyes, and the unit sat vacant for about a month. These apartments were in high demand, and there was often a wait list, so it was unusual for the unit to be vacant for longer than a couple of days while management slapped on a new coat of paint. Evidently, someone had moved into the unit much sooner than I thought but it seemed to have been vacant for a month because there was no moving truck, nobody going in and out, and nothing indicated a new resident. One day there was an unusual car, and it became apparent two guys had just moved in. I saw them come and go a few times. Nothing out of the ordinary. I was frankly just surprised they moved in without garnering any attention. We had a small dog, and I was usually the one who did most of the walking due to my wife's work schedule nurse crazy hours. One day I was walking the dog, and I noticed the two new residents hanging out at the trunk of one of their cars. The trunk was open, and they were carrying on like two good friends would. As I approached, I could tell there were some tool bags in the trunk, but I couldn't make out what it was specifically. However, when I kindly said, Hey there, how's it going guys? They slammed the trunk, quit talking, and barely nodded in response. They quickly went inside and I just figured they were run-of-the-mill jerks who never opened their blinds. It happens. Gradually, I started to notice they had no set pattern. Didn't seem to leave the house at standard hours, never socialized outside, other than talking outside their vehicles with strangers I had never seen before. Additionally, the tenants usually search the various vehicle compartments before exiting and heading inside. Obviously, I'm thinking at this point they're probably buying, selling, or doing drugs, and I'll just leave them alone. But things kept getting stranger. I start seeing lots of strangers in and out of their unit. But again, I'm thinking it's probably drug-related at worst, or maybe they just don't socialize with neighbors and actually have lots of friends. A pattern developed, though. Most of their guests were usually younger women, and their recurring guests were the same two or three guys every time. Our dog was still a puppy, so sometimes I would take him out late at night and the neighbors would be outside coming and going like it was the middle of the day. Maybe they work the night shift, I thought. In the span of one weekend, the strangest things I had seen all happened. I got off work early on a Friday and since it was a beautiful summer day, my wife and I took the dog for a fairly long walk. When we got back around the apartment, we noticed those neighbors had their blinds open, which never literally happened there was a strange woman walking a small child probably three years old or so outside by the hand. 
When she saw us and apparently realized we lived next door, she rushed the child inside and quickly closed every single blind. Shortly thereafter, one of the male tenants arrived and went inside. We didn't see anything else. The next day was beautiful again, so I sat outside drinking beer and grilling for several hours. While I'm enjoying the sun and suds, a burly fella on a motorcycle pulls up in front of their unit. Three women come outside and escort him back into the apartment. About 30 minutes later, he comes out alone and rides off. I'm right in his field of vision, but no smile, no wave, no nod, nothing. Later that afternoon, I'm doing laundry in the back of our apartment. Our laundry room is right by the back door and I hear a heavy knock. I take a quick peek out the window beside the door, and there's a guy with a handgun, sunglasses and baseball cap loudly knocking on the neighbor's back door. Nobody seems to respond and he eventually goes away. I'm a bit freaked out, so I make sure my wife knows to watch her surroundings when she returns from the grocery store. Virtually nothing happens the rest of Saturday. Sunday is where it gets super weird. We're walking the dog again and notice there's a truck we've seen before in front of the unit. It's one of the regular strange men who like to hang out with the tenants. Nothing that isn't new at this point. We walk the dog a few more laps around the little neighborhood, but on the last pass by the unit we notice the door of the truck is open. Regular strange man is passed out at the wheel with the door open and truck running. So my wife, a nurse, is about to help him when the tenant runs outside shirtless and says, Oh yeah, he's fine, just too much to drink. The driver wakes up with this wild look in his eyes. Certainly not one consistent with just a few too many drinks. The tenant, while we're walking away, distinctly tells his buddy he can't do that shit out here before they both get in the truck and drive away. Later, the truck returns and the tenant is the only one in the vehicle. I know this because I was outside talking to the old lady across the street when he came back. The guy briskly walked inside and, as is the custom, said nothing. A few minutes go by, and while I'm still talking with the neighbor, two women come out of the unit with three large, black trash bags. They're so heavy the women can barely hold them up. They say very loudly, ah, nothing like some cleaning. They toss the bags in the truck, and the tenant drives it away later in the afternoon. The tenant returns with a 15-passenger van, and we don't see or hear anything else for the rest of the night. The next morning, though, the van is gone, and there's no sign of anyone in the unit. No other cars, no visitors, nothing. By Tuesday, it's back to the same old guys who live in the apartment. They come and go without saying a word. I contacted the local authorities as well as Child Protective Services. Nobody could or would do much since I had only seen a child once, had never seen or smelled drugs, and everything was just that circumstantially off feeling you get when something isn't right. I always suspected drugs at best and sex trafficking at worst. I'll never know what was going on though. One of my buddies who lived on the other side of the individuals in question said they moved out in much the same way they move in. One day they just weren't there anymore. This happened when I was 14, I'm 17 at the moment and still linger on the memory. I was home alone that night as my mom was working an overnight shift, and my older brother didn't live at home at the time, so therefore I had the house to myself. I'd say it was maybe 9 or 9.30 p.m., and I was in my room working on homework and listening to music with my headphones in, loud enough to where I really couldn't hear things. I remember for a fact that all of the doors were locked, and I stayed home alone pretty often, so I didn't have a reason to worry. Maybe an hour later, I decided to take my headphones out and take a break from homework. I heard noises in my kitchen and footsteps walking around downstairs, which was odd because my mom wasn't supposed to be home until 7 a.m. the next morning, so she could have taken an early night for whatever reason, but just to make sure, I locked my bedroom door and texted her, asking if she came home. It took her about 10 minutes to respond, but when she did, she said no, she was still at work and why I asked. At that point I was freaking out because my mom and brother are the only ones with keys into the house and myself of course. So I decided to text my brother, sure enough he said no, he wasn't in the house, so I told both him and my mom about the situation, and my my brother wasn't far from the house, so he said he would be there soon and to call the cops. As I was trying to find a hiding spot in my room with my phone to call the police, 
I heard my name called from downstairs that got me thinking, did whoever was in the house know me personally, a family friend maybe? I didn't respond out of fear of who knew my name and was calling it, and I didn't recognize the voice. I called the cops and was on the phone with them when my name was called again, followed by, I know you're up there, and I heard someone starting to walk up the stairs. Again I didn't respond, but I was pure terrified, the police assured me they were on the way and to stay put. I was still texting my brother while this was all happening L, he informed me he was five minutes away. That's when I heard the front door slam. After I heard the door slam about five minutes later, the police arrived and assured me it was them and that I could come out shortly after my brother arrived back home. The police looked around the property and all over the house, but there was no trace of whomever was once here. However, there was damage on the door and lock from being forged open and looked to be done by some sort of tool to pick the lock. Everything turned out okay because nothing was taken oddly enough. But the upsetting part is whomever was in my house wasn't found. From that night forward though we got cameras installed and got a better lock. I used to live across the street from a woman named Wendy and her son Dustin. At that time he was 14 years old and I was around 12, but I didn't really enjoy having Dustin come over to my house. However, as time went on he changed and became a much better person. Dustin attended special education classes at school where he received extra support. Additionally, he lived in a foster home because his mom, Wendy, struggled with alcoholism. Every single day, she would drink with some people I didn't even know. They would laugh and scream loudly until 11.30 at night. That's when Wendy would finally make them leave. The problem was, by then, everyone in the neighborhood was already wide awake thanks to her. So, let me share what happened. It was about three or four weeks after Dustin began his special classes. Wendy was drinking a lot more and every night, I heard loud banging on our tough stainless steel door at the front of our house. I kept telling my parents about it, but they just shrugged it off. They told me to ignore the noise and go to bed, but it wasn't that simple for me. I have two bedrooms, one upstairs, my main bedroom, and another downstairs which is like a guest room I use now and then when the weather is warm. I prefer the downstairs one, but when it gets cold, I switch to the upstairs. But one night, when I was sleeping downstairs, I heard this really loud banging noise. I knew my parents would probably say it was just my imagination, so I tried to gather my courage. Slowly, I made my way to the kitchen, opened a drawer, and grabbed a meat cleaver. It helped me feel a bit safer. Then, I heard tapping on the glass of my back door, so I turned to look. It was Wendy, staring at me in the dark. I raised the cleaver, trying to make her leave, but she didn't get scared at all. She walked away from the back porch, and I followed her by looking through the windows in my house. During the whole time, she had this weird smile on her face and just kept staring right into my eyes as we followed each other around. I kind of wanted to know what she was thinking, but at the same time, I was too scared to even try to figure it out. The fear got so strong that my stomach felt all twisted up, and I just couldn't handle being alone any longer. I really needed to wake up my parents, so I ran up into my mom's room and woke her up. She got up quickly and I shared everything that happened. Then she rushed out of her room and opened the door to my dad's room. We all went downstairs together and my dad opened the gun safe, grabbing a rifle. While he did that, my mom called the police to let them know what was going on. Then, out of nowhere, we heard an even louder pounding at the front door, which nearly made me jump out of my skin. Dad moved over to the door slowly, holding the gun and opened it. I stayed behind him, keeping my eyes on everything, gripping my meat cleaver, unsure if I could actually use it if needed. As the door opened, it revealed Wendy with that same weird smile on her face. Even though my dad was right there with the gun aimed at her, she kept staring at me. When the door was wide open before we could even speak, we noticed Wendy holding a massive knife, one of those really big cutting ones. She grinned even wider, then sort of stumbled off the porch and headed back to her apartment. My dad glanced back at my mom and me, wearing this bewildered and confused expression. The whole scene was so strange that we were left trying to make sense of what just happened. A few minutes later, the police arrived and I explained everything to them. They walked to Wendy's apartment, knocked on her door and said they were the police, but she didn't respond. 
When they came back, they told us they couldn't go into her apartment unless she let them or they had a warrant. I'm still living next to this lady who tried to break in and maybe hurt us. It's hard to think about what could have happened if we forgot to lock the front door. I mean, I'm the only one downstairs right by the front door while my parents are upstairs. So if she had managed to get in, what was she going to do with that knife? It's a scary thought, and it makes me feel grateful that somehow we stayed safe that night. Last year at uni, I lived directly across the road from a guy in his 60s. My bedroom was at the front of the house and had two large windows. My flatmates and I never parked our cars or walked on his side of the road because outside his house smelled so strongly of piss and there were split open bin bags piled against the front of his house. His house looked as though it was being renovated and he was always dressed in overalls, but there was never any work being done. Instead, he would stand at his front window all day, not even trying to hide and stare directly into my bedroom or just watch people on the road. It creeped my flatmates and me out as he always had this weird grin on his face and knew exactly who was in and out of the house. A few times I forgot to close my curtains when getting changed my room in my parents' house is at the back and hidden by trees so I never shut the curtains and he'd just stare straight at me and take a long sip from his mug of tea. He would also shout random things at us occasionally when we left the house. My favorite was when he screamed at me to never do drugs because the devil will lick my soul. So he always triple checked doors and windows were locked before leaving. And when we went to bed, especially after seeing him follow another neighbor into her house and demand to know what she'd just bought from the shop. On a nicer note, our road was particularly tight to parallel park on, and he'd always give me a thumbs up after watching me get my car into a tight spot. So my current neighbor is pretty damned creepy. His wife calls him daddy, which causes bile to raise in my esophagus. He has googly, bovine lazy eyes. I think he scraps metal for income. His yard looks like a landfill. He calls me brother, which also causes bile to raise in my esophagus. He walks around his junk yard at odd hours of the night with a flashlight, searching among his junk for various objects that he never seems to find. His house has no discernible exterior lighting. Also, when the wind blows downwind from his property toward my house, I occasionally catch the scent of decomposing flesh. His kids are polite but kind of weird. The youngest one I think breaks out into violent fits of bawling every five minutes whenever she is outside. They do, by all appearances, seem to take in a steady stream of destitute individuals who stay for prolonged periods of time and house themselves in one of the many derelict vehicles he has in his driveway, and then they just move on, never to return. Each has the tendency to sit individually in whatever functioning vehicle usually sans muffler is parked in the driveway, while that vehicle is idling for surprisingly long period of times and often at night. Back when I was 10, I lived in Key West in this two-floor house. We had the bottom floor and this mid-twenties couple had the top. I remember them always making fires in the yard. Once my dog broke a door in my house, so my dad threw it away. And later that week, if my memory serves, we caught them burning it outside. Not really creepy, just weird. It's current and better example. There's a war vet that lives three, four houses down from me and some of the 6th grader kids messed with him by spitting on his lawn and kicking up his driveway pavement which was already basically destroyed. I only found out about this when he sent a police report to us and all the other families of the kids doing it 5 pages long. As I read the letter, it started out formal and near the end he clearly got angry and started cursing. The creepy thing is he took the time to look up our names and the property records. I've also never seen him leave his house. I've seen him outside, but he always stays there. It's not so much creepy for the things he did, but the things he didn't do. I've lived on the same street for about 18 years now, and I've seen him twice in my life despite living only a couple of doors away. His garden is so overgrown it became a forest. His roof caved in and did nothing about it. In fact, the postman stopped going onto his property because it was a health hazard. The only two times I saw him were at 6 a.m. on weekends for some reason. He died a couple of years ago and information started to come out. 
His cousin said to us that he had died from AIDS. He lived alone for all those years, barely leaving the house. In fact, barely leaving his bedroom as all the other rooms were used as storage. He was a hoarder too. Close to 10 years ago, our neighbors told us there was some guy with a ski mask staring through our living room window while we were asleep. Eventually, more and more of our neighbors began reporting sightings of this guy. One person claimed to the police that the guy was trying to open her window. One night we heard what sounded like footsteps in our backyard, so my dad ran out with his shotgun and heard something take off running the other way. We noticed footprints in the mud. Thankfully the cops ended up finding the creeper. Turns out he was one of our Latino neighbors a few houses down. Didn't know them, they never gave us any problems and our neighborhood was pretty nice, so this came as a shock. This next one isn't really dealing with a neighbor, but I thought I'd share it anyway. As I previously mentioned, we lived in a nice little neighborhood, but it seemed our home attracted burglars, likely due to being on the corner of a busy street. So used to have a doggy door in our laundry room back when we still had a dog at that point, but we never bothered to close it up. Well, one night my sister was gone and me and my dad were out. Someone assumed we weren't home because our cars were all gone and he let himself or herself in through the dog door. They walked through the house before noticing my mom, who was in her room watching television. My mother noticed the trespasser, and thankfully they bolted and fled the house. The cops were called, but nothing was done. Lived in a house next to an apartment. My mom, best friend, and I had just gotten home from the fireworks on the 4th of July. My mom noticed that the door was slightly opened. She went outside and yelled something. My friend and I started to head in. My friend opened the door to see some guy walk out and stopped to stare at me before heading across the street behind the funeral home. It was called the cops. They investigated but didn't find the guy or see the phone on my bed hours was torn apart in the kitchen. There was also wadded up TP on my bed and a book that used to belong to my brother. It was about the occult gave them the phone. Turns out it was our neighbor. The next day when we were outside we found a place where B had been in the bushes looking into the window so rug there and beer cans and figured out he could use a card to get in whenever he wanted. The blinds in his front window were so messed up from looking out it. We have a parade that goes through that area and we were sitting in front of my house. My brother was across the street and was interested in our side. Turns out the guy was standing right near me and my friend. He ended up moving away but never got into trouble because he was a squealer for the police. So my current neighbor is a real odd ball. His name is Kelly but we've taken to calling him Quasimodo or Quasi for short since he has a hump. This guy's skin is like leather. And no joke he will mow his lawn in a speedo. And in brisk Wisconsin winters he will walk around with no shirt and a bright orange beanie. Now one summer day he was in his garage out back. All of a sudden we hear him throw something and start shouting, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. So it sounded like he got work done on his motorcycle that he wasn't happy with. But then he started shouting, I've butchered people like you for less than a dollar before. My family was all kind of just standing in the dining room looking at each other not saying anything. More recently though we had a problem with chipmunks they were everywhere. Then all of a sudden we stopped seeing them. Now it's very rare if we do. So my mom ran into the guy and he just goes, I trapped the chipmunks. Got 32. Now we don't want to know what he's doing with them, but I hope it's like the janitor on scrubs with his squirrel army. We kind of just leave him be though. So one of my childhood neighbors was a creepy old man. He really looked like Gargamel from the Smurfs. He shared a rental house with a bunch of random people. His grown daughter was about 19 or 20, but didn't live with him. She would visit him and then leave the house crying. Even as a kid, I knew something sick was going on with that guy, although I couldn't articulate it at the time. One day, my best friend Jimmy was daydreaming at the bus stop and didn't get on with the rest of us. This was in first grade. My mom told me years later what happened. The creepy neighbor walked across the street to the bus stop and tried to convince Jimmy, you should come to my house, get in my car and I will drive you to school. 
Jimmy's mother had been watching him from her window as she did every school day and flew out of the house yelling for Jimmy not to get in that guy's car. My family was visiting some close friends in another town, so we were staying at her house. It's a one-story building with four adjacent little with one shared backyard. One neighbor was a grown man who lived alone and had one of those giant round trampolines in the backyard. We were allowed to jump on the trampoline but not to talk to the man. I never even saw him. Apparently he was a sex offender. Not sure exactly what he did, but it had to do with kids. my parents live in. Historic neighborhood. Very old homes but still. Nice neighborhood. The way the hour is situated was my bedroom window was facing the carport and kitchen of neighbor one. And neighbor two's bedrooms faced our carport and kitchen. There was walkway about three feet wide between my bedroom window and one. We had leets had a thorn bush planted eye front of mine and my sister's windows, but they needed a trim and my dad cut them back a lot. Well, neighbor two is same age as me, maybe 13, and I'm in my room changing one day and I see something move from the corner or my eye. It's my neighbor just sitting and watching. He sees me and takes off. I tell my dad who immediately goes and talks to their parents, and then he attaches a dark curtain and reinforces the windows. From then in two would periodically come to my window to tell me he lost his baseball in our yard. So one day I'm home alone and he comes to the front door and tells me, I show him around back and tell him to go look for it, but I not coming out. He goes home, my sister comes home, then he comes back and asks again. I go to help him look and he straight up starts gropping me behind our sheet. Immediately ran inside and told my sister who called my parents and I told them, and that was the last time any neighbors from Hash 2 sides so much as looked at our house. I worry that I'm the creepy neighbor. I'm probably the most quiet one in my family. I just don't know what to say to other people, and I stress incessantly how often is normal to greet a neighbor, which I know is dumb. So I just do my best not to have to do it. A few years ago, my neighbor's cat got out, and they were pretty upset about it, or so I thought. They had asked us if we'd seen it, and my mom told me the husband was pretty bummed the cat was gone. I was getting ready to go teach, so it was like 6.30 in the morning, and I thought I saw the cat. I pulled over, left my car running in park, and scooped up this cat. I rang their doorbell at 6.30, which caused their dogs to bark a lot. It was not their cat, and the terror of standing on their porch that morning while holding a random cat will never leave me. The next door neighbor's middle-aged daughter had gotten divorced from her first husband, and then engaged to this new guy. Either they were living with her parents for a time or her parents were helping out with the grandkids. Whatever the situation was, we usually only saw her new fiancé's truck. I think he was unemployed at the time. We didn't know the neighbor's daughter or her kids very well, and didn't know her new fiancé at all, however. We were on good terms with the couple who owned the house. I was in middle school at the time and waited for the bus when I took it with two other girls S and J. Jay claimed that some guy in a truck was watching the girls at the bus stop. One day S's father called my mother and said, What kind of neighbor do you have living next to you? S's father had decided to follow the truck after the bus picked S J and I up in the morning and saw the guy go into the neighbor's house. So apparently the neighbor's daughter's fiancé was sitting across a fairly busy street from our bus stop a few times a week, and on at least one occasion had followed Jay home in his truck at least once. I think after that her mom started picking her up from school. We never knew how to broach the topic with the couple who owned the house next door, and after a month or so he got a job and they moved out soon after. I still wonder how the neighbor's granddaughter fared with that as her stepdad. It's not really creepy, but kind of funny. So this old couple that lived beside us since the neighborhood was built eventually moved out. A Chinese family moved in, which wasn't too surprising as we had a huge influx of Chinese immigrants in the 90s. One day I'm in my kitchen and hear yelling and screaming in Chinese from their backyard. I step out onto my back porch and I see the mother chasing a squirrel with a broom, just losing her mind. She scares the thing off 
and then returns to her home like nothing happened. I realized later that maybe she doesn't know the difference between squirrel and dirty sewer rat, a few houses down. We had an old Macedonian guy who lived in his garage. Apart from sleeping, he was always, always in his garage, sometimes just sitting there watching the world go by. He lived with his daughter and her family from what I heard. A friend of mine told me that the rumor was that he did something terrible to the family. They didn't want to put him into a home because he was family, but at the same time they didn't want him living with them. So he was banished to the garage. No idea if this is true, but he was out there even in the winter. He was harmless, however. When I moved in with my girlfriend, our neighbor, another nice Asian guy, wasn't too bright. We heard this weird hissing sound. I looked out my upstairs window and he was draining for reasons unknown his propane tank by sticking a pen or something into the tank's valve and pressing in the pin. I was seriously scared that thing would explode. I found out later that my father-in-law said that they called him over because they couldn't get their toilet to work. He fiddled with it and realized it was super clogged. He had to drain it and physically remove the toilet. He found a diaper wedged in there. They actually tried to flush a diaper. So when I was a kid, I had an elderly neighbor and two of her kids still lived at home with her. A man and a woman, both late thirties, they've got to be fifty by now. My friend and I used to help the old lady because her kids did nothing. Their house was filthy, neither of them worked, it was just weird. And her son would try to hang out with my friend and I, we were like seven and eight at the time. He was almost forty. It's more recently. I had a neighbor that wore a hat just like Indiana Jones. We actually called him that. He was so weird. He lived alone and had a woman's dress hanging in a window. He parked behind his house. That meant he had to squeeze his car between the house and a fence to get it back there. He had a fan box in his window covering the gap his shades made. He also went to church and had a sign in his window that read, Are you saved? Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.